Hey guys, it's Michael from GPURisers.com and today we're going to be reviewing the Zotac RTX 3060 Ti light hash rate. So I snagged this graphics card off of Zotac's main website. Um, they have a queue system now in place. As soon as the queue pops, you can jump in line and uh, hope to get something. Usually the 3080s, 3090s, and 3070s go first. I was able to snag this 3060 Ti off of it, and I actually have another uh, same model coming in later this week. When the 3000 series came out, I actually got one of Zotac's original ones that is not light hash rate. The only identifier I could find on this was just the sticker. And it's not on the box, it's actually just a sticker overlay that they have and the original does not have that. I believe the LHR models of these are easier to get um, just for the plain fact that when you go online to most of the popular websites that show you the profitability of each card um, they don't really take into account some of the algorithms that are possible with the LHR models. Um, they might not be as profitable as Ethereum, um, however, I think that they come pretty close. So we're going to analyze the differences in this video and see if the profitability on the LHR models could come somewhat close. Now since I do have both models, the LHR and non-LHR, I'm thinking about doing a video of a complete teardown and seeing, you know, the boxes are just one extra sticker. So what if we actually took the cards apart and looked at the boards, the PCB layout, and saw what really is different? So let me know if you guys think it'll be an interesting uh, video to see a full teardown down between this and the original. Um, I'm kind of interested in doing it, um, but I'm a little worried to take both of these cards apart completely. However, um, I've taken tons of cards apart, just no 3000 series yet, except for one 3080 to replace thermal pads. And um, that's about it. Um, no thermal paces had to be replaced on any of these. Uh, they're, they're still fairly new. So I'm gonna quickly take this out of the box. It's Zotac, there's not much to see. I can guarantee it's gonna be the same as the non-LHR. So uh, we're gonna get this out and we're gonna get it popped up on our test bench. So we got it taken out of the main box here. It looks exactly the same as the non-LHR. Um, we got information about it. And of course, the good old Zotac um, horrible packaging. Usually companies will, you know, put a nice little anti-static bag, wrap it up, um, you know, little, you know, gadgets that they'll throw in here or something like that. But nope, not Zotac, not even tape, just a bag to have their graphics card in. So take that out and it is completely identical to the non-LHR. I love the 3060s that do have the one four pin on them. It does help. Um, doesn't take up as many slots on your GPU for your PCIe cables. However, if you do have our splitters, these are eight pin splitters that branch off into dual eight pin splitters. So I had a big issue prior with many 3070s taking two and they use the only, they use about 120, 130 watts and uh, they really only require one. The PSUs that I use are 1600 watt EVGAs. Um, they have nine VGA cables coming out of them. And so if you have two eight pins that need to be dedicated to it on every uh, you know, power supply, especially the beefy 1600 watt power supplies, um, then you're only gonna be able to have uh, you know, a maximum of four graphics cards. Um, and that's assuming that you're not using um, you know, PCIe's for uh, your risers. So now many of my rigs are 3060s and 3070s um, and I do have our 8 pin splitters on all of my rigs now. I can have up to 9 graphics cards on a 1600 watt power supply and uh, that is powering the um, you know, risers with Molex. You could power them with Molex or PCIe, however I find it a little bit easier to do Molex in, in some conditions. However, with single 8 pin on these you can power your graphics card with one of the 8-pin splitters and power the riser 
with the other part of the splitter. We are going to be powering this card and the riser with a single eight pin splitter um, on our test bench. Whenever I have the opportunity to get some of these cards, I know uh, Gigabyte has, um, you know, a, uh, I think it's called an Eagle. It also has the single eight pin on it, as well as EVGA, their uh, lower one has uh, a single eight pin as well. So I do look for those. If I can get them, I prefer those. Usually graphics cards will have a uh, you know, nice little plastic to, to shield everything that you can peel off. Sometimes on the fans right here, on um, the back plate, you know, something that you can peel off, but nope, not Zotac. They don't do that. So we're gonna throw the Zotac now on our test bench. Uh, we have our test bench here, nothing special. We have an older motherboard that we're going to swap out soon. Uh, a generic, I believe, Intel Celeron processor. Uh, we have a Asus Thor power supply, 1200 watt power supply that actually shows the digital reading right on the side there when it's on. Uh, we have one riser that's gonna be coming out on the main PCIe 16 slot and our splitter cable here that's connected to one of the eight pins from the power supply, if you can see it right there. Right there, okay, there it goes. So we also have a screen on here as well. The HDMI is plugged straight into the back here where the graphics card IO plate is. Um, we have our SSDs, of course, and um, this is a small little keyboard and mouse combo that I picked up. It, it was always so difficult to, you know, uh, troubleshoot rigs all the time, and we, uh, you know, often found that we're carrying around keyboard and, and mice and, and dealing with, you know, two different USBs, and sometimes the USBs don't act right <laughs> on motherboards when you're doing all this. So this just takes a simple one USB, and you use the pad right here as a mouse. Um, these are really cheap on Amazon. I can throw that link down below for you guys. And um, these are these have just been a huge uh, time saver for us and for troubleshooting. And uh, that's how we control all of our test benches. And when we have to do maintenance on our rigs, we also use this. It's a lot more convenient than carrying around a, a mouse and keyboard. So on our test bench also, we have a webcam right here, which is pointed upward towards the whole rig on the whole graphics card you'll be able to see, but it also shows the current wattage on the Asus Thor power supply. Um, we tested this with a watt meter on the wall and it is very accurate, a lot more accurate than I thought it would be, uh, but we're you know pleasantly surprised with it, so that's why we included it on our test bench rather than having a watt meter uh, plugged into a wall or an extension cord off to the side. We also have our five bay enclosure here. Uh, this was a little project when uh, Chia first, you know, started becoming a, a thing, I guess. Uh, it's currently plotting still. It takes forever to plot uh, Chia plots if you haven't looked into it. Uh, you know, they have a, a I th believe it's called Mad Max plotter and that has helped tremendously. Maybe I'll do another video on Chia. Um, I, I have, I think around 10 terabytes plotted right now and it makes about, I wanna say 40 cents a day. Uh, the profits have gone very far down compared to when I first looked into this, but it uses very little energy and uh, it'll be interesting to see where that whole project goes. Anyways, back to the 3060 Ti low hash rate or light hash rate, I believe it's called. Uh, we're going to throw this on the test bench. All right, so we got the graphics card all hooked up right now on our new 8 cap risers. Uh, you can see right here one of the 8 pins goes into the graphics card, and I think you might be able to see it right there. Um, yeah. The other eight pin can split off into a six pin. You just have to slide that little bit off right there. Um, so we're gonna pop this on and uh, see how it works. So let's start this thing up right here. I got green just because it's an NVIDIA card. And I forgot to plug in the HDMI. I believe this one only has one HDMI, so that is what we're gonna go with. All right, let's try this one more time. Fans are spinning, lights are on right there. 
Okay, that's a good sign. And we got a boot sign, so I believe we're ready to go. All right, so I believe I had older NVIDIA drivers on here, so we're gonna go ahead and reboot. Okay, we are booted back up. It should s try to start mining right off the bat. It's okay, it's doing something. There's no overclocks or underclocks on this card. Um, I'm just booting it up this first time to see uh, if it turns on. It is a Zotac after all. Now I'm going to switch over to my computer in a little bit, uh, which will be remoted into this so that you guys can actually see what's going on with it. Now there's no overclocks or anything on this card right now, but I don't know if you can see it. It does show 25 uh, mega hash on Ethereum. So this is for sure an LHR model. All right, so seems like this is getting warmed up, pulling about 230 watts. Um, again, no overclocks or any optimizations yet on this. We're gonna pop over on the computer and we're gonna start messing around with it.